South China Morning Post, 12th of November 2022, Foreign Minister Simon Coveney claims that despite escalating tensions, Ireland doesn't wish to cut off relations with China. During a period when China was not seen as a danger by the rest of the world. In 2018, Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney promoted Ireland as the entry point for Chinese commerce and investment into Europe during a quick tour of Hong Kong and mainland China. At the time, Ireland was looking to diversify its trading partners in the wake of the bitter Brexit decision in the United Kingdom. Donald Trump had embroiled the United States in trade disputes with China and the European Union. Even while the lasting effects of Brexit have not changed, a lot has changed in those four years. A contentious discussion over decoupling and economic dependence on China is currently taking place, and the EU has strengthened its regulations on predatory Chinese investments. Beijing's failure to denounce Russia's invasion of Ukraine has only heightened anxiety across the continent. This week, Kaveni acknowledged that business ties with China had grown more complex in an interview conducted in Dublin. He asserted that Ireland would follow the EU's lead in dealing with Beijing and would soon be putting into practice the FDI, foreign direct investment, screening measures developed by Brussels to guard vital assets against being hijacked by the Chinese. Ireland will continue to be open to conducting business with the second largest economy in the world, though only within the boundaries of the freedom provided to member nations to pursue their interests. The relationship between the EU and China is a complicated one that the EU continues to, I wouldn't say, struggle with, but it certainly is finding it difficult to find a sound footing because China is a vast predatory country. This vast economy is slowing down. It's a trade partner that can't be ignored, said one analyst. It is also a hegemonic competitor, of course. In addition, there are very valid worries about the spread of harmful Chinese influence, according to Kaveni. Ireland is the 27th most populous country in the EU, but it exports the fourth most goods to China. According to Chinese customs data, Beijing exported items worth $14.4 billion to the second largest economy in the world in the first nine months of this year, including nearly $4 billion in vaccinations and more than $5 billion in microchips. The majority of foreign direct investment FDI, into Ireland comes from the United States, which includes companies like Google and Pfizer. However, there are also famous Chinese businesses there, such as the outlawed Huawei Technologies, the social media spy app TikTok, and Waxi Biologics, a contract maker of vaccines that is constructing two facilities near the border town of Dundalk. The position Ireland has taken on banned Huawei is possibly the best example of how the geopolitical environment is influencing economic policy. The Xinjiang-based company revealed a new European cloud facility in Dublin worth 150 million euros. 151 million US dollars, last month. In a press release, a beaming Leo Varadkar, the deputy prime minister who, by the coalition government's rotation agreement, will start his second term as Taoiseach or prime minister in December, was seen shaking hands with senior Huawei executives, a rare sight at a time when the company is being forced out of many Western markets. A week later, Irish media claimed that the government was considering prohibiting Irish telecom companies from using Huawei equipment in their vital infrastructure networks out of concern that the Chinese government would be able to access it. Kaveni was aware of the contrast. Because of our small size and high degree of globalization, Kaveni added, I believe Ireland shouldn't neglect China in the context of trade, and we don't do so, the existence of Huawei here is evidence of that. However, if we believe there is a risk to it, we must be mindful of how we preserve data and the questions we ask of companies and nations. Despite prior rumors that Washington was urging Ireland to ban the Chinese company, Kaveni said that was not the situation today but may be the case in the future. He also stated that the government has spoken extensively with the US and UK about Huawei. We probably aren't feeling the pressure. Of course, we communicate with the US and the UK. From a trade perspective, they are close allies of Ireland. Our annual trade with the US is estimated to be worth around 100 billion euros. Therefore, Kaveni responded, we spoke to them extensively about that. Huawei. But no, I don't believe it would be fair to say that we feel pressure. China is too huge to ignore, the minister argues. Still, it's not too big that we should be afraid to call China out when we have a difficulty with something that they're doing, according to the minister, who is anticipated to lose his job in the government reshuffle in December establishing illegal police and spy stations in Ireland, for example. 
He referenced base Chinese police stations in Europe. One such station, run by the Dublin branch of the Fuzhou Municipal Police, was recently ordered to close. The creation of a regional Chinese police station in Dublin was a really weird development that we witnessed. He said, this is completely unacceptable, as far as I'm concerned, and we made it very clear to the Chinese embassy that it was their responsibility to make sure that it closed and didn't happen again, adding that the embassy responded quickly in shutting it down once their improper conduct was made public. The Industrial Development Agency IDA, according to Tommy Fanning, head of strategy and policy, hopes to bring more non-government and private Chinese companies to Ireland in the future. We have a significant presence in China and frequently speak with Chinese multinational corporations about potential future investments. All of that will be done by the law, according to Fanning.